Here I'm going to be turning this piece of uh, tiger maple down into one of the perch legs that I'm featuring how to build on the blog now. I'm roughing it down, this is a really ornery piece of wood. Not only does it have uh, contrary grain that waves every which way in it, but it's also really dry. I've had this wood for years, and if it wasn't that it was so beautiful, I would, I'd leave it alone, but it looks great in this perch, and I don't use it for anything else, so here I go. I'm going to set a dimension for the final rough here, and then I'll just finish roughing it down so that I can get on to business turning the details. This piece is a bit long for my lathe. The tool rest I use is only 24 inches long, so I'm going to have to move the tool rest up to the top now and work on just the tenon end. Once that tenon end is turned to completion, skewed and all, I'm going to move the tool rest down and do the lower part, and that way I only have to move my tool rest once, which on this old lathe is, is no pleasure, so I try and reduce how many times I can move it. Here I'm going to size the tenon line at 7 eighths of an inch. This is just the baseline of where the tenon is. And here, after about a half inch distance, I'm going to set a one inch diameter. That helps the transition down into that tenon drill nicely. And then one and three sixteenths right here. And this is as far as I have to go in, in working the top. The uh, tool rest is long enough that I'll be able to handle the rest of the leg with just one more. First, I'm going to go in and rough out that tenon. I'm just going to leave this tenon as a cylinder. After I've turned the entire leg, even oiled it, I'm going to dry, or I should say just super dry, that tendon at the top and then rechuck it back in the lathe and turn it to its final size. And you'll notice I can take pretty heavy cuts in the beginning of this, but as I get closer and closer to my final size, I have to lighten up on the touch dramatically because this, this contrary grain really likes to peck out, and if I do it too much subsurface damage, even the skew won't be able to take care of it without altering the shape too much. So I'll come in, I'm gonna mark that, that line where the tenon begins, although like I said, I'm not gonna cut it, I'll just cut everything leading up to it, and I'll just clean, clean skew this little area. I don't even have to go all the way. That's going to be enough for me to be able to move my tool rest and finish out the rest of the leg. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark the rest of the leg for its diameters. And you'll see on my template I have the, num the locations, I should say, for both of the legs, the front and the rear. I'm just careful to label them and make sure I remember which one I'm doing at the uh, correct time. I'll just set these diameters. You'll notice I only set the diameters of the large portions of the leg. Everything in between I, I judge by eye. And it really does come down to aesthetics. You're probably not going to get small enough to affect the strength of this piece. So the best thing you can do is to choose what looks best to you as you go. A couple practice legs will go a long way to helping you decide that. Notice as I'm cutting this, even though it looks like I'm cutting all the way across, I'm actually lightening up the cut as I come up the, the uphill side of that cut. That way I'm always cutting from a large diameter to a small, or most always, and that's really going to help the quality of the cut as well as controlling the tool. So in this instance, while it's still just coming down from the, from the cylinder, you'll see I'm cutting pretty much both directions as I go, but soon I'll start just cutting on one half of the stroke and then on the other. There it goes. I made some very light cuts to save me from a lot of heavy skewing and mucking up my shape. Back to my skew. Now 
notice that once I've established the angle of the skew to the leg, it really travels at that angle right across. Not a lot of moving around. That's a mistake I see, I see a lot. Folks, instead of moving their body, move the tool in all sorts of contortions to try and make themselves more comfortable, but then the tool has to be adjusted at all times to cut, and that gets to be a bit heck. So you'll notice I try and act more like a machine. Here's a good example. You see, as it travels along, it maintains that same angle in relation to it. Notice how I'm moving all the way from my feet. My whole body's involved in this. My hand is acting not only as a steady rest, but it's also giving me a lot of feedback. I can even feel the smallest of peck out as I'm going, so I know when the, the surface is perfectly clean. In this instance, I've chosen to do the skewing at a high speed, which is unusual for me. I normally like to slow down with the green wood I use, but I found that with this dry hardwood, a faster speed actually helps out. Now I'll go in and cut those V notches. They're going to help define this leg. This always tells me I'm in the home stretch. And now, after removing the tool rest, I'm going to go ahead and oil this right on the lathe. First, I'll apply the oil, getting it all over the leg, even in those little V notches. I'm just using a tongue oil, a, a pure raw tongue oil, so it's non-toxic to me, which I really like. But by holding tight on here while it spins, I'm really able to build up some heat. And this tongue oil sets beautifully once you've done that. It really seems to perform a great service and make a protective seal there. I will oil it again later when it's on the, on the actual chair, but for right now, this is going to help keep it from getting dirty as I work it in the shop.